three of you, we're going to be looking at trig identities today. Uh, this was my favorite memory of high school, honestly, was doing trig identities. Well, okay, next to the nice looking boy in English. But this was my favorite uh, remembrance of high school math, was doing identities. I thought they were like puzzles. I hope you like them too. Anyway, a mathematical identity is a statement that is true for all values of the given variables, unless there's any restrictions and you would state those. So we want to look at this identity, tan theta equals sine theta over cos theta. Because it's an identity that we want to prove, we're going to assume that it might not be true, and I don't want to lie. So I'm going to write left side and right side and compare them and see whether, in fact, they are true. So the left side is tan theta. And tan theta, I know, is y over x. We looked at that last the last couple of days, and that is true. Right side is sine theta divided by cos theta. And I know that the sine of theta is y over r, and cos theta is x over r. I can tidy that up and see if I can prove that it's the same as the left side. That's the same as y over r divided by x over r. And when we divide fractions, it's y over r times upside down r over x. We can divide out r from top to bottom and cancel. r divides into both once, and we have y over x. It equals the left side. So concluding statement would be, therefore, left side equals right side. Therefore, tan of theta equals sine theta over cos theta for all values of theta unless cos theta can't be 0. So what are is my restrictions on theta? Theta can't be, and you may not know this off the top of your head, but it can't be 90 degrees or 270 degrees. Another trig identity that can be very helpful is called the Pythagorean identity, and it's sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. But is it in fact true? Let's see if we can prove it. Left side, right side. The right side is pretty straightforward. Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. And I'm going to replace sine squared theta which is the same, by the way, if you write it sine theta squared. It's just the notation that they use, so you know it's the entire ratio sine theta that's being squared. So you could write them like this, I suppose. I know sine theta is y over r. And cos theta is x over r. So let's tidy up y squared over r squared, x squared over r squared. I have a common denominator. y squared plus x squared over r squared. Well, I know from when I was finding the value of r squared, we find r by using a Pythagorean relationship. So my top is, in fact, the same as the bottom. So I can replace this with r squared over r squared, which is equal to 1. The left side is equal to the right side. Therefore, for all values of theta, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. And there are no restrictions because there's no denominator. With the two identities that we've just looked at, let's see if we can prove another identity. We want to prove that that is equal to that, and we'll worry about that a little later. We want to show that tan squared x plus 1 is equal to secant squared x. Now we've introduced reciprocal ratios, and maybe we need a little note of those off to the side. Sine theta is opposite over, 
opposite over hypotenuse, and we had cosecant theta was the opposite. Cos theta is the opposite of secant theta. Tan theta is the opposite of cotangent theta. Let's look at the left side. I know that tan of x, and actually I'm going to replace this again just because it can confuse students, that's the same thing. I know that tan from my last slide was sine x over cos x. So I'm going to replace tan x with sine x over cos x. I am going to just write that a little more friendly. And I'm adding two fractions. I need a common denominator. My common denominator is going to be cos squared x. So my first numerator is fine, but my second numerator is going to need adjusting because it's over invisible 1 at the moment. So I'm going to adjust it to cos squared x. We established in the last slide that sine squared something plus cos squared something is equal to 1. So my top is 1 and the bottom is cos squared x. I don't know anything else I can do with that, so I'm going to go to the right side. Secant squared x, which is the same as, if you like the look of this better, secant x all squared, is the reciprocal ratio of cos theta. They're opposites. So secant theta, or x, sorry, is 1 over cos x, which is the same as 1 squared over squared x, that's just the funny notation we use, which is 1 and cos squared x, and oh my, it is the same as the left side. Left side equals right side. Therefore, this identity is true. Tan squared x plus 1 equals secant squared x. But we can't have cos squared x or cos x equal to 0. So x cannot be 90 or 270. Which was, coincidentally, what they were saying up here. We're just not ready for that yet. Let's do another example. Let's have a look at this identity. Sine to the fourth theta plus 2 cos squared theta minus cos to the fourth theta equals 1 for all theta. Right, left side. Sine to the fourth theta plus 2 cos squared theta minus cos to the fourth theta. They're a little intimidating, aren't they? Right side is a 1. I like the right side. For the left side, I'm going to just change the order because I see something that might be helpful. Sine of the fourth theta minus cos fourth theta plus 2 cos squared theta just change the order. These two right here are powers of 4 with a minus sign in between them. I see a difference of squares. So our algebra skills come into play with some of these as well. So if you have something squared minus something squared, or worse, to the power of 4, you have a difference of squares. So two sets of brackets. And then we're going to tack on this plus 2 cos squared theta in a minute. So at the beginning of both brackets, I have sine squared theta. For difference of squares, you have a plus and you have a minus. At the back half of each bracket would be cos squared theta, cos squared theta. Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta, we noticed on the last two slides, is equal to 1. And I have my other bracket, sine squared theta minus cos squared theta plus 2 cos squared theta. There. I have 1 times that bracket which if I do distributive law, 
really does nothing other than get rid of the brackets. So sine squared theta minus cos squared theta. I have done the distributive law and that plus 2 cos squared theta again. I have sine squared thetas and I have two piles of cos squared thetas. So I can put these two together into one pile. I have sine squared theta, one of those. And I have, with a negative cos squared theta and positive 2 cos squared theta, I have positive 1 cos squared theta. This is the same identity we recognized up here as being equal to 1. Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. Oh, left side equals right side. Therefore, it is true that sine to the fourth theta plus 2 cos squared theta minus cos to the fourth theta equals 1 for all theta. I'm not going to model anymore. I'm going to get you to wrestle through some of them with your friends. I think they're a blast, but you need some algebra skills and your basic trig identities. We give you these ones. The reciprocal trig identities you know from the first day. This one we proved today. This one is key. And some of the other ones you can use in some of your proofs. Oops, I just wanted to show you your homework. There. Page 310, 1, 5, 7, and 8.